the internet. It is uh, something that we use every day. It's a really beautiful thing, isn't it? Really love it. And it's, it's, it's actually not only does it allow me to check my email or chat or check Facebook and do these simple things, but I can do a lot more when with that. Uh, pretty soon, uh, with some of the projects that are running in Sudan, probably by next year, I'm going to be able to go to one hospital, do the paperwork, and then I can go to the other hospital. And so I don't have to redo the paperwork again because my data is stored somewhere centrally so that it is available on the internet. I could simply go online and do uh, banking transactions and I can transfer money to someone else, which is really nice and beautiful too. For example, I have my phone. It just uh, it provides me with all of these. It's not really a one of, of these advanced phones, uh, just to be honest, but, but it actually allows me to do a lot of these things, which is really nice and I love. So technically what we're doing is we're traveling from our actual world into another world. Uh, I like the color blue, so I'm just going to call it planet blue. Uh, this world that is, uh, doesn't have any boundaries. So I can do anything in that world because everyone is connected, but which is really nice. But is it really as nice as you think? Uh, because now, let's say that my phone gets stolen because now my identity is not really a physical card anymore. It's like a, it's a digital identity. It's in my phone. So basically, when I use like password or, or, or if I have any other sort of these identities, so basically, from making my life really easy, it becomes a really, really scary place, which is the internet. So all of a sudden, from loving my phone, I turn into hating it because it becomes really scary. So to begin my talk, uh, I want to uh, start with introducing how people have fun. Uh, some people have fun listening to music or dancing and doing this stuff. And some people play video games, some people go swimming, but then there are some other type of people that have fun really, really strange ways. Uh, so many of you have probably watched this, uh, this movie, Saw, Saw Serious, and uh, as you can see, the guy says, oh, I want to play a game. I mean, remember what type of game he was playing? He was just, he's simply just torturing people and killing them in really nasty ways. And the son of a moron, he's like enjoying it and having fun. And uh, and the, the really scary part, uh, thing about this is that when you have fun doing something, you really do it very, very well. This is really scary. The guy died in, I think, the third movie or something, and he had still had se uh, movie sequels to it, and he's dead. So that leads us to hackers. Who are hackers? Hackers are people who do bad things. Uh, they simply break the intended functionality of the internet so that they could steal identities, they can damage systems, and do all of these really weird things. But does that mean that they're not smart? They're really smart. They are actually very, very smart. They think outside the box, and that's what makes them different, because thinking outside the box is not something that you learn at school. You can go get a PhD in computer science, build systems, but breaking into systems and thinking outside the box, that's a totally different story. It's like a talent, and they do it for different reasons. Some of them do it for fun, some of them do it for money. So uh, if this is really what you think hacking is, this is not. Uh, this is just a nice guy trying to be looking like a bad guy. It's not what I'm talking about at all. Uh, um, there's another part that is scary about the internet. When you go on the internet and do all of the nasty things that you want to do, you don't get caught because, well, most of them don't get caught because nobody sees you. You can do it from the comfort of your room. And this is, I, I'm going to ask a question. Just raise your hand, including myself. Within the last 48 hours, did you, uh, do you think that within the last 48 hours you tried to stalk somebody? You know, don't make me feel bad raising my own hand. Okay, I'm just going to ask that question again, but just pay close attention to this, uh, to this slide. Any, maybe more hands, no? Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we, we haven't done it before when following somebody on the street because we, we were scared of getting caught. But now we do it on Facebook, for example. I don't get caught, so I, like, uh, so I do it. The thing is, we as human uh, we are humans always like the, the, uh, the idea of getting more information. So that, let's say, for example, you're in your room and then there's an angel comes in and ask, tells you that, do you want to know a lot, uh, all, everything that you need to know about your girlfriend, for example, that you don't know? Do you think that you're going to be like, oh, really, I trust her, uh, it's really ethical, I don't like, it's just a lie. You're just going to go like, okay, go ahead. So uh, if you're still not convinced about these people doing nasty things on the internet, I'm just going to try to convince you. I used to be one of these people. 
okay? Uh, when I was younger, so if, 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 if one, any of you want to add me on Facebook, don't worry, I don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> Having given this talk, I doubt anybody want to add me anyways, but. So I, uh, I go to Internet Cafe, it was back in the days. I just go to Internet Cafe, and I don't really go to Internet Cafe to check my email or chat or anything like that. I go to Internet Cafe and I just sit on this first computer, spend about five minutes, and then I uh, move to the next computer. Then the next computer, I spend about an hour moving along all the computers, and then I just leave. What did I do in these five minutes? I installed the spying software so that I go from home, and then I track about 30 to 40 people every night, just watching their activities. It, uh, uh, the information that I had access to wasn't really important or interesting, but the interesting part of it is just being capable of watching someone else. Just, it was really fun. So uh, if you're still not convinced, I'm gonna tell you something that you can do. When you go to, uh, now we don't go to internet cafes anymore. We just go to a cafe to grab a cup of coffee and then they have this free Wi-Fi connection, right? So basically you go on Facebook and there's no wire connected. Have you ever wondered how that data is traveling from your laptop to Facebook? Uh, if you hover, you know, like a, 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 a mobile phone uh, on top of that laptop, do you actually see the data on the screen capture or anything like that? No. What if you want to develop a software that would do that for you? It looks like, it sounds like rocket science, but it is rocket science because right now some, uh, uh, somebody else who is really smart, done it for you, so that now you don't really need to be a hacker to break into systems anymore. You can download the hacker, because it's, 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 the hacker became a software. So basically, you just download the tool, and it will do the genius part for you. So you go to this cafe, and you download this tool. Does it ring a bell, look like any other logo? How about now? Maybe? It's, uh, I'm not gonna give you the name of the tool, okay? So it still had the fire in it, it just that doesn't have a fox, so. It's a sheep instead of a fox, so. Okay. So you download Fire Sheep. Oops. Uh, and you just fire, uh, fire up that tool in the cafe where you think other people are actually going on Facebook. And then it will just simply give you this list of people that are online on Facebook so that you can impersonate these people so you can have access to their Facebook too. So basically, I'm assuming everybody in this room can do this. Remember the TEDx online registration that you did online to be here? That requires a lot more sophistication than this tool. Another example is WhatsApp. I'm gonna ask a question. How many of you remember the password you set up for WhatsApp first time you used it? Nobody remembers because there's no password except simply. Uh, it, it actually automatically does a password for you, which is IME number, which is a serial number that's in the phone. So basically giving that number and giving your phone number, I could impersonate you on WhatsApp using a tool just like the one you see, which is just a web client for WhatsApp. All it requires is the serial number and the phone number. How do I get the serial number? If you type in star hash, 06 hash, you get that serial number. So if I have your phone for five seconds, I can do that. And then I can impersonate you on, face, uh, on WhatsApp. Another example here is Ringa. Ringa is a tool just like Skype. You download from the Android market for free. And then, uh, but it, it, this one has additional f functionality. We, I could actually make phone calls to landlines and mobile phones too. But before I do that, I have to register my phone number so that they would authenticate me just to make sure that it is me. So basically, they ask me for my phone number, they send a text message, my actual phone number, and then with a code so that I could put it in the tool so that they can know it's me. So basically, what I do is I borrow my friend's phone, I tell them, okay, I just wanna make a phone call real quick. And I put my friend's phone number in the tool, he sends a message to my friend, I get the code and delete the message and give the phone back to my friend. And now I can generate a list just like that in this tool called Ringa, so now I can be my friend and I can call anyone and my friend number would appear. This is not really the scary part. The scary part is that now here in Sudan, for example, and in many other countries, they have banking services that authenticate the person based on the number of the person send the text matches, a message like SMS, SMS banking, if you heard of it. So with this, I could, I, I could simply lock anyone's bank account, uh, given that I could borrow his phone for five seconds and do a lot more things too. So now uh, I prove to you that everything that we use now every day is broken. Every, not it's not broken, but it's, it is it's susceptible to compromise. It could break into anything. Any, uh, if you just do a Google search right now, you can find ways. Uh, so uh, this is an a funny, interesting one. Is there's somebody hacked into the street side advertisement screen uh, in Russia, and then he displayed some inappropriate video in it. Uh, it created this traffic jam, as you can see. And he was just making a joke, actually. He didn't really mean anything bad. But this actually caused someone to he said that he had a heart attack watching that video, so he got into an accident. What type of a video would give you a heart attack when you watch it? 
I have no idea, but the guy hadn't gotten to an accident. Anyways, so uh, um, uh, uh, you see the pattern here? Thing that we use every day right now are possible to break. So now we have smart homes, which are probably gonna be possible to break too, because now we can control your house, smart house, using your smartphone. So that you can open windows and doors and anything in your house using your smartphone, or you can do it on the internet. So basically, back in the days when I used to break it, when I wanted to break into uh, some, someone's house, uh, all I would need to do is just have to find out where the house is, and then I just lockpick it. But now I have to hack into that house over the internet. So basically, back in the days, you were, ha you, you were worried about people in your city, but now you are worried about people in the entire world because the internet is not in your city anymore. It's in the entire world. So you see where this is going. Where do you think this is going to go next? Okay. Uh, this, this is a tough one. Uh, okay, so, so, so somebody came up with, uh, with this funny idea of uh, a smart toilet. Uh, so that you could control your toilet on the internet. And uh, somebody else who's actually funnier than the first came up with the idea of hacking into that toilet so that when you have, so that you have a smart toilet and I hack into it and I would flush the toilet for you. How terrifying is that? Enough said about that. Okay, uh, next one, this is one is, uh, is even more terrifying. This is an implanted medical device. There are actually hacks against this one, so I could deliver an electric shock to the patient and kill him, uh, or it's using Bluetooth connection. You see? So basically our lives, not only our money and houses, are actually in planet blue. They're over the internet, so can, somebody can hack into them and they can actually kill us. So back in the days, I would have to look into somebody's, uh, into the, the address book so I can find out where he lives and so I can break into his house. But now over the internet, how can I find a smart home or a smart toilet or anything like that. Uh, uh, how do I look for that? So now, uh, uh, when, you, when you go on uh, Google search, for example, you look for PDF files on books. But is there a search engine that I could use that I could actually look for any internet connected device? Well, there is. As you can see, this one's called Shodan. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. I just typed in Shodan webcams and then it would it give me this, actually. I, it was like live cameras connected to the internet of some supposedly secured facilities. I could watch uh, that all night long, just seeing people come on, going in and out. This is another example here, someone's house actually. And I could actually just keep watching these videos uh, or, or the live cameras in this house. Uh, he thought that he was securing his house, but now his, his cameras are connected to the internet and he doesn't even know. Uh, only God knows where other places in the house they have cameras. So basically back in the days we used to have fun like playing games, going to the library and reading and going on the internet. But now we do all of these things on the internet, uh, 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 about five people are born every second in our actual world, but in the internet world, there are about eight people that become internet users every second. So right now, about eight people just on the internet became internet users. You see how big that number is? So my message, first message is divided into three sub-messages. My first, uh, my first uh, message is for the client, for the end user. When you see, uh, when you see uh, on Windows that says that update, I know it gets boring, waiting for that line to fill up, but you really need to do that update. It's really more important than you think. The other thing is choose a good password because a three letters password, I could break it in three seconds. But if you add three uppercase letters to it, it becomes three years. And then be, be a little bit suspicious because if you get an email from somebody in Uganda, for example, saying, oh, uh, I'm going to die and I decided to give you my money, it doesn't make any sense. Don't believe it. Uh, my second sub message is I don't want to scare people off the internet. Because the internet actually solves a lot, a, lot, uh, a lot of big problems, even in Sudan and many of the developing countries. For example, corruption and fraud. Because when processes like governmental processes are all manual and paper-based, they are very easy to fake and play, manipulate and play with. But when they become electronic, it's very, very difficult to do that. So we need, we need that type of technology. The other, my, my last message here is that we need our own hackers. If you really think that you have these type of skills, develop them because we need that. We need people to be aware of the technology inside out. When we, when we, we for example, are always getting these technologies from country B and we you know, don't know how these technologies work, who, now having given this talk, who do you think is gonna have full control over the other country? Of course, they're going to spy on us, they're going to listen to our phone calls, and of course, they're going to flush our toilets for us too. So, uh, uh, finally, 
I just want to say that the internet actually makes us happy. How does it make us happy? It's just my personal opinion. It makes us happy because it keeps us close to the people that we love. Uh, I think that makes us happy. The internet makes that possible. Thank you.